Here we go. Let's make it a good day. Every day, every day. We do it our own way. Sing it out every day. Let's make it a good day. Every day, every day. Oh, no matter what they say. Sing it oh, yeah, yeah. Da -da -da -da. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to what is uh, understandably going to be a different version of our show, at least for this first couple minutes. I'm Jace. Over there is my good friend, Kendall. Good morning, Kendall. Good morning, Jason. Um, I, I don't think I've ever said this before uh, in all my years doing TV, but if for the next few minutes uh, you don't want to hear um, just some plain spoken, honest reaction and thought, and maybe an opinion or two you don't want to agree with, I politely ask you that maybe come back and join us in about 12 minutes, or maybe come back and see us tomorrow. Um, I don't want to do this. I, I walked in this morning, and I looked at my executive producer, and more importantly, my friend Jeff, who knows me uh, better than most people. He definitely knows me in this role. And I, I've hosted shows during difficult times for years, um, following deaths of family members, following national tragedies. Um, I've had to kind of walk a line because I've always done in some way a show like this, you know? Mm -hmm. But this one I struggled with because I, I, I don't want to do this. I, I, my, my nature, I'm a people pleaser. My nature is to have people like me. So it, I'm feeling very vulnerable right now, sharing opinions that, and thoughts that I have off the top of my head that you may or may not agree with or may or may not even like. I don't want you to not like the show because you don't like an opinion I have. But then I realize sometimes there are more important things than being liked and having people watch your television show. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those mornings. Um, I couldn't believe what I saw yesterday. I couldn't believe it. Um, I was shocked. I was disgusted. I was angry. I was filled with rage. And I was sad. I, I, I became incredibly sad because I thought, how in the world did we get here? Then I realized we should be shocked by what we saw yesterday, but I don't know if we should necessarily be surprised. And I think we'll be diagnosing for years to come, actually, of how we got to where we got yesterday. It didn't just happen all of a sudden. But I think what makes me sad is the fact that for the first time in a long time, if I'm being really really honest with you, I, I lost a little bit of hope yesterday. Because unlike other problems that we faced as a country and as people with differing opinions, the thing that's different now is we're, sometimes, we're dealing with two different realities. And how do you reconcile that? And I think that's part of the problem. And I think that's what is very scary is we can do a lot of things, but in order to do that, we all have to be working from the basic, the same basic set of facts and information, and, and we're really not at that place right now, and it scares me. I'm really scared, and that's the thing that kind of frightened me the most. I also, because this is just my perspective, and obviously in the line of things that are important, I mean, the breaking in and the the fact that these images were broadcasted around the world. I'm a political wonk enough to know that the geopolitical ramifications of what you're looking at right now we'll be dealing with for years. We really will. And I also thought about these, and they're not protesters. I know the difference, you know? I know the difference between protesters and good people and, and, and the, the mob that, that took over the Capitol yesterday. I thought about all of those people in the Capitol, in the rampaging the offices of lawmakers. And I thought of all the sensitive 
information that was in all of the offices that they had access to. And it scared me. I thought about that. Then I thought about, oh my goodness, you know, what, what is happening? Have we gotten to the point, and I think we have, where we just, and I've said this before, we just, we can't just disagree anymore. We have to be unbelievably disagreeable. And that makes me sad. I'm from Indiana. And I, I'm also 46, and I'm old enough to remember, you know, we had a, a, sen- a senator, uh, Bai, Senator Bai, his son Evan Bai, uh, became our governor in Indiana. And this is my favorite story, and this is a politics story. But Evan left politics. One of the reasons the governor left politics is because of the, the toxic nature that politics had become. And he told a story that I always think about, and I think about it on days like yesterday because it makes me sad. And he said, you know, in my dad's day, in Senator Birch's day, he would go on the floor of the Indiana State House and they would argue, argue, argue. Oh, horrible arguments. Fierce arguments about policy. And then at the end of the day, there's a place that serves great shrimp cocktail uh, called St. Elmo's uh, in downtown in Indianapolis. And they would argue and moan and, and then they would go after session to St. Elmo's and have shrimp cocktail. And they'd be friends. Republicans and Democrats. You, don't, you can't do that anymore. One of the things that struck me was when, the, when some lawmakers were being interviewed yesterday, including our own Senator Amy Klobuchar, she, one of the things where she goes, she said something with such disbelief, and I went, oh, the fact that that's revelatory makes me sad. She goes, we were all hidden and kept in this room that was way too small, and she goes, and we were, all of us were in there, Democrats and Republicans, and we had hard conversations. And I thought, wow, the fact that that's an extraordinary statement, that the Republicans and Democrats were in the same room, that's extraordinary now. Speaking of Senator Klobuchar, late night shows tackled the difficult day. Uh, Klobuchar was on with Colbert and described the moment. Take a listen. Where were you when the actual breaching of the Capitol happened, and can you walk me through how you knew that you were supposed to leave? How, how were all of you informed what was going on? So we waited in the Senate chamber for a while. People were milling around. People were following the news. And then all of a sudden, believing we were safe in the Senate chamber, all of a sudden they announced that we weren't. Um, and we were quickly taken to another room in the office complex where we actually um, sat together Uh, for the entire day, Democrats and Republicans and our staff, um, as we awaited the clearing of the Senate chamber. And there was a lot of, I will tell you, uh, major discussions between people about what has been going on and what this president has done. Were you watching this unfold? On On Seth Meyers, uh, one of my favorites, I I, I love her, Nicole Wallace, Mm -hmm. uh, who was on TV most of the day. She joined Seth and she talked about and don't roll it yet, Leo, one of the guests that she had on, Congresswoman Sanchez. And, and, and just think about this. Just think about what Congresswoman Sanchez told Nicole. Roll that. You, uh, you mentioned your time in the White House, and, and you were obviously working in the White House uh, during 9-11. Uh, and you've mentioned today to, to some, of your, uh, some of your guests that it, you had a flashback to that, uh, because it must have been terrifying for uh, those that were in, in both chambers when this was going down. Yeah, well, Congresswoman Linda Sanchez came on the air and said that last night she called her husband in California and told him where he could find her will. So last night, Congresswoman Linda Sanchez thought it was possible that today she would die at work. She works in the Capitol. So it is inexplicable to me if she thought yesterday enough concern that she told her husband where her will was, and she has an 11-year-old son, she got very emotional telling me the story. Why didn't the Capitol Police have a better plan than they had? I mean, it didn't appear that the protesters, the rioters, met any resistance at all. And, and to me, yeah, and that, th- that leads me to this. What happened? You know, the force is 22, around 20, the Capitol Police force is around 2,200. Uh, 500 were on yesterday, estimates are around 500. How, how did this happen? There's video of the Capitol Police opening the gates to some of the, of the people, opening the doors, escorting, 
escorting these, the, these, these people down the stairs gently. This one woman, I saw a video, this woman after ransacking an office is escorted down the stairs. And I gotta tell you with, the, with, with respect and honesty, as I'm sitting there, I'd be lying to you if I didn't thought, would these people be treated so kindly if they didn't look like me? And, and again, because this is from my perspective and I'm obviously in the media, I, I didn't bring this up a few weeks ago and, and we'll wrap up and the show will go back to normal, but I gotta tell you, um, I had a conversation, a really difficult conversation with Colin a couple weeks ago about a, a family discussion or a con conversation. And, I, and it struck me like, a, like just a ton of bricks. Then I, I just got real tired of hearing horrible things said about the media. Uh, in, by people in my orbit. And I thought to myself, I'm in the media. And people go, oh no, you're different, you're ta a talk show. No, I I'm in the media. And more importantly, my friends are in the media. And by saying this horrible crap about my friends and colleagues, saying they, they, they lie and they're, look, and every industry can be criticized and we make mistakes. And when we do, when my, when, when my colleagues, I'm not a journalist, but when my colleagues make mistakes, we have to do retractions. But when you say these awful things, which has been said for years and years and years, when you're saying that, 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 that my friends and colleagues, what you're saying is that they walk into work every day actively and with permission that they're lying. And I gotta tell you, I've been doing this for 25 years and that's not my reality. That's not the people that I see. I mean, I, I see the opposite. I work, the people with the most integrity that I know in my life, not in just my career, but the people with the most integrity in my life are my colleagues. They're not liars. I've seen my boss, Mim, go up to a reporter and go up to a producer and change what we call an intro because the, the language was a little, maybe could be construed as slanted. That's the reality. That's the reality. So when I saw images yesterday of media being circled and their equipment trampled, I thought, oh my God, what if that was Jeff or Bill Keller or Tom Lydon or Alex or anybody they're just doing their job to bring you information. And what I fear is, to wrap up, if I hear one more time, this isn't who we are. Yesterday, what scared me the most and made me the most sad is I thought, maybe we are. And we need to deal with that. We'll be right back. I needed that actually. That's great. Just I needed a little moment of levity. Yeah. And I don't know if you know what just happened, but usually <laughs> we have applause right there. And watching Jeff struggle with the applause button. <laughs> the button. I need no. I'm. I, I appreciate you, Jeff. That we all needed that this morning. This is Jeff. Of just. <laughs> it's not working. The applause button wasn't working. I appreciate your effort, Jeff. I do. <laughs> Can I? One more little piece of levity. We have Dax coming up too. And like I, I promise you at the top. I'm, I'm, I'm done crying, I'm done for a while. Um, a little piece of levity, just to transition out of here. Uh, my dogs, when I went on vacation, my dogs uh, were house sat by, uh, by assistant Q. Mm -hmm. And th they're picking up too many bad habits from him. And what I mean by that is they're getting spoiled. Because Q would take them for long walks after each potty trip in the middle of winter, because you know Q likes to ski. Daddy don't like to go outside in the cold. So now every time we take them out now, what does Biggie, what does Mr. Big think for potty? What? He's gonna get like a four mile walk. No, 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 you're not. The, I, we ain't Q. We wanna get, you know the walk we're gonna do, Kendall? Potty, back in the house. Down to the puppy 20 bed. degrees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, it's time for today's hot dish. Let's get going, everybody. Thank you, Jeff, it worked. It worked. Round of applause. The final episodes of Alex Trebek's Tenure in Jeopardy are airing this week. Next week, Ken Jennings fills in as guest host. And now we know who will be the guest host after that. The LA Times reports that my ex-wife, Katie Couric, 
who in that dress looks like from far away, that graphic, she looks like a disembodied head. Oh, she Because it's blue on blue. That's funny. <laughs> uh, Katie Kirk will step in for one week to host the quiz show. Neither Katie nor Jeopardy are commenting on the news. Oddly enough, um, it's a big day for Katie. Today is her birthday. She's a Capricorn. Uh, I, is it Capricorn right now? I should. I don't know, know my. Well, I, I, I don't You're know a my. Leo, darling. Oh, you I do know Leo. that. I am a Leo. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm a Leo. But hey, I know Katie's polarizing too. <laughs> We're just a show full of polarizing topics today. <laughs> but I know Katie, Katie's polarizing. But I'm gonna tell you, love her, hate her. She's good on TV, mm -hmm. and she's smart. Katie is like whip smart mm -hmm. so I think she could be good that was always her thing I feel like on the Today Show she came off as very just nice and kind and then she'd just stick them well again that's Great. why I always say a show like that mm -hmm. that's the hard job mm -hmm. the morning shows because you have to go from in interviewing like a Supreme Court justice right and then the next segment you're making biscuits with Emerald you yep. know what I mean you got to mm -hmm. be good at both mm -hmm. you know who's good at everything Kendall who Dax Holt Oh. Not you, Jeff. Jeff raised his hand. Oh. Jeff, you're good. I'll make a list. You're good at like eight things. Leo yeah. took a shot of me, actually, wow. when he said his everybody. No. Our hot dish continues with our insider to the stars. Please welcome back to the show the co host of the Hollywood Raw podcast, Mr. Dax Holt. Good morning, Dax. Good morning, Jason. How you doing today, buddy? Well, you know, you know, you know, it is it is what it is, right, my friend? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not that good today? Well, you know, yeah. Okay, but I, I'm real you're bringing levity. Uh, and good news. Now, you hinted about this in your very Dax Holt way a couple weeks ago, and now we can just open the barn doors. We can just let it rip, Dax. You're, <laughs> you're, you're on Shark Tank. I'm going to be on Shark Tank tomorrow. Woo! I am very Woo! excited. <laughs> okay. Is, yeah. Now, I've known, about your, I've known about your side hustle, and I'm not talking your exotic dance career, uh, but I've known about your... <laughs> I've known about your side deal, your side hustle for a while, and I right, when you said your concept, I went, oh, Dax, this is a good idea. Tell the folks about, about the company. Yeah, so my buddy Matt and I had started up a fantasy football championship trophy belt awards company called Trophy Smack. And this is, I think we're going into like year three now. And uh, this has been something we started up as just kind of like a fun idea that we can't, you know, he came to me with on like a, a New Year's Eve party at my house. He was like, hey, you know, I, I was going to win this year fantasy football because he's in a league with us. And he was like, I went to go find like this over the top ridiculous trophy to kind of just like gloat in everyone's face and I couldn't really find anything and so I think I want to start making them and I'm like all right I'm in I was like literally right after I left TMZ so I had plenty of time on my hands and uh we started doing it we started manufacturing these really cool anodized metal columns making like three column really big over the top trophies our tallest trophy is 56 inches tall oh. so like yeah, when you walk into the room and you're holding this two tower trophy, it's really in your face. And then we we did a championship belts, so they look like big WWE belts. They're gold or silver, and uh, I, this thing has really just kind of taken off. It's had a mind of its own. We've done some really big partnership deals over the last couple of years. We're all over the fantasy sports, so we do also now baseball and basketball, which we launched last year. Kind of a horrible time to launch baseball and basketball during a pandemic, but nevertheless, it still's done well. And so tomorrow night, we walk into the Shark Tank and we pre present our idea in front of the sharks. And it was a very nerve wracking ordeal because <laughs> it's scary to walk into Shark Tank. Well, okay, let me ask you back up a little bit. W tell me about, first of all, what made you apply and how do you apply to be on Shark Tank? Uh, so we, uh, I think we originally applied because we're just like, you know what, like this would be the perfect business for a shark to invest in because, you know, it helps us out and they've got these contacts. They can make any company a lot bigger. I mean, we're already doing well, but we just thought that we could, with their help, take it to a next level. Um, the auditioning process was, it was long. I mean, it took, I think we've been working on this for like a year and a half. Um, and you know, and, and it's very nerve wracking because you kind of make it to the next stage, like any TV show, you make it to the next stage, right? And you never know. And then we finally, like a week ago, kind of got the, yep, you guys are making the airing. So we found out tomorrow night on ABC at nine. Okay, so you bring up a good point. You've been on TV since you were like four. Uh, 
and you're used to it. I'm sure you feel like me. Like, I don't get nervous. Yep. I, I was nervous this morning, but you don't get nervous. But take me to the take me to the shark tank. There you are. You know how to do TV, but this is very different. You're standing there in front of the sharks. Are you nervous and what's it like? Not no, not when I was in front of the sharks, because um, you know, interviewing celebs, that doesn't bother me. I think my nerves were right before the like famous double doors open and we like walk down the shark tank hallway. That's when I was nervous. So I'm like, my heart's beating. I look over at uh, my, my partner, Matt, who he is, that is not his world at all. TV is not his thing. And I had to like hold him and be like, buddy, it's okay. Just relax. Like this is, <laughs> this is going to be a fun thing. Uh, but the second I'm in front of the shark, I totally fine. Uh, I think I, my concern was more like, I don't want to say something that like maybe is a red flag to a shark or say something because listen, I'm a TV guy. Yeah. So it's not like I'm, I'm a, the best business person in the world. Matt is really like the brains when it comes to business, I'm very creative. And so I was like, oh, just don't say something stupid, Dax, and ruin this whole thing. That was my concern. Who were you? Were you angling your your pitch to a certain sharker? Is there a shark? A sharker? You, a sharker. <laughs> was, was there? Uh, a, honestly, a, you walk into that room, any shark is going to change your business. So we walked in with the mindset of like, you know, if we can make a deal in here, no matter who it is, it's going to be amazing. Who do you, is there one that you like though the mo, like better like you wish, I, you probably can't say. Well, but I it, think, yeah, I, you know what I was gonna say. I feel like most people walk. Everyone when they see a business, they go, "Oh, Mark Cuban for sure," because that's sports. But that's not necessarily true. I mean, I think you know Lori's got this incredible profile behind her. Uh, you know, I, I'm telling you, Mr. Wonderful. Everyone would want to deal with Mr. Wonderful. You got to give up a, probably a lot of percentages on other things, but listen, any of those people are amazing. That's all I got to say. Okay, now look in the camera because you obviously can't reveal anything. Um, look right in the camera, Dax, okay? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be rich enough to buy my membership fees into Walt Disney World's Club 33? <laughs> <laughs> Those are pretty expensive fees. <laughs> we will see. You got to wait and tune in tomorrow night to see. I'm watching your face. You're you're kind of smiling. So should I should I apply? I actually I already did. Should I should I tell them? Should I tell them to to send you the invoice for Club Thirty Three? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Real, one or more. If you're I, gonna have to send me tissues. We'll see. Okay. We're gonna be crying. Really quick. One more question. I'll let you go. How long was the the taping day? I always like to know that. Was it a, was it a long day? Honestly, I don't remember. I feel like we just kind of blacked out after the first five minutes, and then it was done. <laughs> Kendall's you laughing don't, at your Don't answer. you ever do something where you're like, after it's all over, you're like, I don't even know where the time went? Yeah. It was one of those days. Meetings with my executive producer. <laughs> 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 well, uh, I don't need to say this, but I will. Good luck. Minnesota and Wisconsin's rooting for you, buddy. We'll be watching Thank tomorrow. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm excited for this finally to air. It's been a long time in the works. So. Well, I'll text you as soon as it airs and you can legally say something. All right, that sounds good. Bye, buddy. There's Dax Holt Shark, Air, Shark Tank airs tomorrow night on ABC. As they say, check your local listings. And you can find the Hollywood Raw podcast wherever you get your podcast. Yeah, I, I had dinner, uh, you know, Dax lives in Anaheim. And I had dinner with him, and he told us this idea. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't just complimenting him. It's a great idea. It is. There's hardly anything like that. No. I play fantasy, and it's like to find a gaudy, ridiculous trophy is not as easy as you'd think. It's a great concept. Mm -hmm. They would be, the sharks would be foolish to not back Dax. Right. I'm just getting Dax's. Oh, you're going to get the deeds? Yeah, I know. I know. I want him to pay for my membership fee at oh. Club 33. Just, I'm oh, hoping. Lord. I don't even know what that means. I'll tell you later. It's very, okay. it's very fancy. Okay. Still ahead, everybody. Need help upping your Zoom background? <laughs> oh, he's back. I'm so excited. If anybody can put us in a good mood, it's that guy right there. Dale K has some tips, plus Australian accent lessons. <laughs> that and more when we come back. Only on our show, we can go from one topic to that, to that, to Australian. Welcome back. 
From game nights and happy hours to work meetings and more, Zoom is the way we're all staying connected with family and friends these days. But have you looked at your background recently? Check yourself. Joining us live with some natural ways to spruce up your Zoom background. Look, it's my buddy. I have missed him so much. Garden guy Dale K. Hi, buddy. G'day, mate. And it, thank you for that intro because my heart is always a lot warmer uh, being on your show. But I got to tell a, a true story first. And you mentioned like bad Zoom shots. You know, we've all seen them all. We've watched the telly or been on meetings. There's, you know, uh, smoke detectors in the background, an open door, kind of all kinds of funky shots out there. But my true story is just the other day, my daughter, she's 22. She had a Zoom interview for a firm out in Milwaukee. She's going, you know, she's looking for full-time employment, yada, yada. And so as soon as I, as soon as I heard that, I said, where, oh, where are you going to do your Zoom, your Zoom shot or your Zoom interview? And she said in the basement, because she's got a new puppy and she didn't want that running around. So she's going to head down to the basement. So right away, instantly, fatherly garden guy instincts kick in. And we go down to the basement. We look at the shot. I put a little plant here, a little something there. And so I thought to myself, that's what everybody needs to know, how to make the Zoom shot look better and to do it naturally and in a way that doesn't distract from you because you want people to focus on this, right? But you don't want just a, a smoke detector in the background either. It's easy to do with plants. So let's take a, a little look at some of the names or some terms that you can use when you're going out to your favorite local garden shop to look for plants. There's some different types. Firstly, there is something called a hanging plant. This is something that would hang from maybe a hook inside your home. That's a hanging plant. There is also plants called table plants. They're usually smaller size containers, a six inch container like this, or usually a four inch container size like that. That's what we call a table size foliage. And then finally, there is what we call in the industry floor foliage. And that's usually bigger size plants, just like this ficus here in a big pot and covers a large amount of space, sits on the floor, hence the name floor foliage. We're very technical in this, uh, in this industry. And then you can start to combine certain elements to improve your zoom shot. And again, remember, you want people to focus on this, not too distracting on what's going on in the background. So subtle tones are really good, but really the key feature should be something luscious and green. So um, bamboo, natural woods, of course, succulents, super popular. This little macrame, you know, back from the 70s, uh, macrame is very popular right now. This one's a wall hanging unit that can just go right off to the side of your, of your zoom shot. And then also, I think mirrored also kind of creates a little bit of interest back there as well. So some of my favorite plants to actually incorporate into your zoom shot. Um, I love these. Well, let's start with color first. Let's start here. Okay. I tend to stick away from flashy color like this because it doesn't last very long. I prefer, if you're going to do color, I prefer an orchid, maybe even just a white orchid. Doesn't, it's not too distracting. Mirandas are really cool. Check out that funky foliage on that, the variegations in the leaf. One of my favorite plants right now. That Miranda, looks fake, Dale. Really that looks like one. you painted and it. Also, am I, do you know, why would you think I would be using fake? No, I didn't. My heart I, just went cold, look, Jason. I, look, I, look I'm, not, I'm not accusing you. I'm just saying it's so beautiful, it looks artificial. Oh, I thought you were coming at me. My, my heart like little no. like flooded a little bit. I thought you were coming at me. No, this is that. No, but that that's true. That's true. It does look a little bit like like um, fake or surreal. But that's that perfect margin in the leaf. So again, that's super. You know, if that was kind of back on your desk, kind of in the zoom shot, it would be kind of there, but not really distracting. Calatheas, um, very real, just like me, very real. Um, also, some variegations in the leaf. Um, Swiss cheese, Monsteria, super trendy plant right now. By crikey, if you want to um, be like the, the team lead in the meeting or you want to prove that you know what's going on in fashion or trends, Swiss cheese, uh, Monsteria is a good one. If you're not a gardener, don't worry. I have a plant for you. ZZ plants right here are absolutely bulletproof. You, you cannot kill them. They're super hardy. So that's one that you could put almost anywhere. Low light, high light, doesn't matter where it goes or be just just fine some simple to oh i forgot this thing too this is kind of fun plant swing too you could put a little plant right here hang it Dale, behind you Dale, um, what is that cool. thing can, that looks of like course, what, incorporate what is that pencil looking thing to your right what is that 
So some simple care tips, you need water, right? Sometimes if you're not in your office all the time, this is a water globe, has a terracotta spear right there that goes into the soil and water, this just, this just screws off, the, um, you put water in here, this goes into the pot and then you have a self-watering container as well. Also, it's good to have a little saucer just like this as well so you don't damage your desk, things like that. And of course, you can also incorporate some ceramics and a little bit of fertilizer once a month will keep your zoom shot looking super good. Now, if you're wondering at home, or Jason, if you're wondering what I did for Clara, uh, my daughter, when she did a zoom shot, we kept it nice and simple. We had a little um, white orchid kind of just behind her, and then we just put like a little botanical print. I have these wonderful prints at home by Margaret Preston, they're from Australia. I put a botanical print with the orchid, and we'll see. Um, I don't have the results if she's got the job yet or not, but I will keep you posted if we my will, fatherly garden guy instincts. We will be here work. waiting. I thought that device was what, where you kept your adult beverages, but I'm glad to see it's just for water purposes. Just for water purposes. You can, you can do that if, if you're on the beach, like maybe at the Royal Hawaiian, this just inserts here. <laughs> um, beverage goes in here and you just lay on the beach and snorkel. Perfect. If you missed uh, any of the plants Dale talked about, we're going to be posting this segment on our Facebook page a little bit later. Just search for Jason Show TV. We're not done with the garden guy. No, grab your jar of Vegemite. Dale is putting me to the test with some Aussie slang when we come back. Back in a moment. Vegemite. Welcome back. As we all know, Dale Kay is from Australia. I thought he was from Boise. Is he from Australia? And loves to drop some Australian phrases like crikey and Bob's your uncle on us. So how well do I and you at home know Australian slang? Dale is putting us to the test. <laughs> okay. okay, Dale, this is, this is the shot we needed today. What are you wearing, Dale? Um, I'm wearing a little bit of a, some cricket gear. I got my Akubra hat back there and my boomerang. I'm, part, I'm like an eighth Aboriginal, so I got some um, rich Australian heritage running through my blood. So my dad um, gave me this boomerang over here many years ago when I first came to the, to the United States. That's what's going on behind us here. Okay, uh, so you're gonna host this. I'm just gonna sit back and play. I love this. Take it away, uh, Wink Martindale. <laughs> All right, this is a little uh, pop quiz I like to call Australian slang. And the first one is Arvo. Is it A, an umbrella, B, an armchair, or C, afternoon, Jason? Can I phone a friend? No. Um, yeah, you, you can phone whoever you want. You can phone my mom. Uh, umbrella. I'm going to say umbrella. Uh, no, Arvo is actually abbreviated for afternoon. So if you're having a, a barbie in the Arvo, you're having a barbie after lunch, mate. The number, next one, number two, is the word bogan. Is it A, a happy person, B, an unsophisticated or uncool person, or C, somebody from money, a rich person, mate? Bogan. Mm. A bogan, bow, bow, bow. Bogan, bogan. Bo, a, a bogan. Think of me. Think of me. You're a bogan. You're well. What would I be? <laughs> Dale, don't set me up I'm, like that. A bogan. It's, it's, you're it's, a happy. You're happy. So a. Hey. No, no. It's actually, it's actually an unsophisticated person. Maybe somebody from maybe the west side of town, um, dressed in flannel, maybe. <laughs> doesn't speak good English. One of those kind of people. <laughs> Dale, I've already um, upset enough. That's Dale, that's I've already really upset enough people today. Day. I've already upset enough people today. Can we not attack people in flannel? Please, well, I'll, Dale, I'll please. <laughs> well, no, I wear flannel. It's me. It's me. It's me. <laughs> okay, next um, one. Let's move on to the next one. Is budgie smuggler. Budgie smuggler. And budgie is a bird. It's budgerigar. Is it A, someone who steals money, B, is it tight socks, or C, a speedo? Well, for like the a European type of speedo. For the record, no matter what it means in Australia, in my community it means something probably very different, but uh, I'm gonna go with C, speedos. Don't, don't offend anybody. <laughs> you are correct. 
You are correct. And there's actually, there's actually a little company in Sydney called uh, Budgie uh, Swimwear. They make little Speedos, so there you go. Have you, D Dale, have you ever the, won, have you ever one. worn Budgie Smugglers? Uh, when, I was a, when I was a kid, yeah. That was, you know, back in the early 70s, mid 70s. Yeah, everybody was in Speedos. Okay, wait. Mean, it wasn't good. We have another one? It wasn't good. Yes, but this is my favorite. This was my favorite pastime as a teenager. Pash, having a pash. Is it firstly a kiss, B a hug, or C a punch? Kendall, help me out. What do we think? Pash. Kiss, hug, or punch? A kiss. A kiss. Uh, we're gonna go uh, A kiss. Uh, you are correct, but I must clarify. I must clarify. I must clarify really quick. Um, a pash is not the the type of kiss that you um, give your grandmother on the bir on your on her birthday. Oh. A pash is that wet, sloppy, <laughs> tongue intertwined, flickering tongue. It's that you know love bite on the neck kind of kiss. That's a pash. Okay. It's abbreviated from passionate, by the way. Uh, oh uh, yeah, I get it. Last one. Well, last one. Go ahead. Last one. All right. Last one. Here we go. The last one is Dunny. Is it A, a toilet, B, a camera, or C, a mug? Mug. Pretty easy one to finish up with. What'd you say? Mug. Toilet. To toilet. That's your answer? Is that no, your final toilet, answer? toilet. Ding, 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 ding. You are a winner. Congratulations for playing this edition of Australian Slang. Thank you, Dale K. There's the one, the only, Garden Guy Dale you are K. You're a winner. You're always a winner. You're always a winner to me. You can see this segment a little bit later on our Facebook show, a face page. We're opening up the Jason Show mailbag, and yee, when we come back, back after this. <laughs> Do we need to open it today? <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Uh, it's time to answer your questions and respond to comments about the show. We're opening up the Jason Show mailbag. You've got mail. <laughs> the, the irony of us doing this today is not escaping me. Uh, <laughs> first up, a message from, what is it, Jeff? Cre Chris? Cress. Cress on Facebook. Hey, Jason, love your show. You've been spicy lately, but sometimes you say what you think. You vent for us. So be spicy when you need to, because there are a lot of us biting our tongues. You know what's interesting about that? I actually told Jeff, there was a couple weeks ago where I kind of had an epiphany, and that's an epiphany in a shopping mall. Mm -hmm. But I had a little epiphany, because yeah, I was just, I wasn't holding back as much. Because again, as I said at the very top of the show with my feelings about yesterday, I really do, even if you didn't like what I said, I really do, because I'm a people pleaser, I twist myself into a pretzel to not offend. I really, really do. Mm -hmm. um, and there's lately, I have not felt so pretzely, and I've just kind of said what I'm going to say. And I, I've been a little spicier lately, and I think that's all right. I think it's okay too. Yeah. And you're a very beautiful pretzel, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Next, several <laughs> people had something to say about Stephanie Hansen's soup segments this week. Kristen said, love Stephanie Hansen. She seems like a fun person with interesting ideas. <laughs> There's so many ways to describe Stephanie. <laughs> and Joanne says, love Stephanie. I love the idea of putting soup in jars. Great idea, and I never thought of this. Uh, uh, my mother, mm -hmm. I, I took my mom grocery shopping that afternoon, and Dar was like, I never thought about mason jars for soups. We do that. I shouldn't say we, my husband oh. does that. Oh, very. Somebody's, no, I mean, but fancy. we give it to people and they're like, what is this? Because they don't normally see it, but it's it's easy. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I wish I, that's one of the things, I wish I knew how to make soup. I've never made soup in my life. Soup's so easy. Okay. Like, I mean, I can make soup. Oh, that's true, and we all know hashtag monkey bread. But anyway, <laughs> next, never you'll never down. live that down, no. Next, Julie has a message for producer Ted. She says, 
I just watched your segment on The Bachelor, Ted. I'm surprised Ted didn't mention there's a contestant originally from Owatonna. Uh, Anna now lives in Chicago and her parents still live in Owatonna. What do you have to say about that, Ted? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if Ted even knew. That I, I love The Bachelor. I actually did not know that. So. I didn't either. I don't blame Ted. I had no idea. T Ted, do you even remember? Oh, Ted goes, oh, I'm not going to say that. We don't know. Because again, we're getting enough mail today. Yeah. Chris and others have the same question. How do I sign up for the virtual audience? Well, here's the deal. It's very easy. If you go to the Jason Show Facebook page, uh, right? Do we still have it pinned to the top, Jeff? Uh, there was a new post yesterday. There's a new post yesterday, and you sign up there. Just look okay. for the post. Mm -hmm. Just look for the post. Mary had a comment about our Before the Show 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 on Facebook. She says, Director Leo has a nice shirt. Looks crisp and new. Yes, uh, we, we found out from, from Leo's wife. He went to Sears, he went to the Granimal section. He got a giraffe and a giraffe. Mm -hmm. And he has he bought a brand new outfit. I'm just loving the inflection you're putting in all of these different comments. <laughs> it's cracking me up. <laughs> well, no, Leo. he did. He got, he got a new shirt. <laughs> Leo, Leo looking snazzy, I'm <laughs> telling you. Finally, Swanson Molly 49 shared this picture. She says it's her cat Autumn watching the Jason show uh, with her back on Christmas Eve. That's <laughs> I think that's how most people watch her show. Uh, yeah, people, we were just talking about this. People loved our Christmas Eve show. I'm so happy. We love putting, it was, it was the one where we just kind of talked about our Christmas memories and Ted's internet went down. That's probably why people liked it because Ted was only in it 50% of the time. <gasps> Oh, 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 wow. I, hold a on a moment. minute, hold on a minute. Ted's choking on the shade. <laughs> She's choking. Oh, you've just been fired. Ted just fired you. I don't know if Ted has that permission. If I had a dollar for every time I got fired from this show, I, I could know. quit this show. Very true. You can stay connected with, so with our show on social media. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just search for Jason Show TV. We'll be right back, everyone, right after this. <laughs> You're rehired again. I just found out. <laughs> Want to give a, a compliment? You know, we've had a lot of um, contributors over the years. I love them all. Hanson, uh, just in my years at Fox Nine, we've mm -hmm. had experts come and go. I will just tell you this. Dale K is just the best. I mean, just a, a, a good human. He's the best TV. Mm -hmm. Anytime he's here, I call it rice aroni, add water and stir. I don't do, I take away from the segment. That's why I just shut my mouth. You just <laughs> let, you just let Dale go. Mm -hmm. He's fantastic and he's the nicest guy. Mm -hmm. And I'm so, we're, we're very lucky to have him as a part of our, as our part of our family. And, and we can never get rid of him. I'll, I'll pick it. <laughs> <laughs> like, He'll make us like sign. Norma Ray. I'll be like Norma <laughs> Ray. Yeah. On top, yeah. Anyway, uh, you can uh, follow us, follow our show on social media, and sh watch our show on YouTube. Uh, past episodes are right there. Just search for the Jason Show TV. We'll be right back to wrap things up after this. Kendall joins me again. Oh, I forgot our bubblegum goodbye. Well, what are you so doing sitting there? Oh, what am I doing sitting here? I'm telling Hold you. Hold on a minute. Hold These please, are questions everyone. that Jeff makes up. Kendall and I have no idea what they're going to be. Oh, my goodness. Okay, Kendall, you ready? They're exceptionally hard to open, too. They are for some... Jeff oh. was, like, angry when you put them together. Yeah. <laughs> That's his thing. Okay. <laughs> what year of your life would you want to relive? Oh, God. Um... 21. Why? Why do you think? Oh. No, I, 21 was my junior year of college. Your it, 21 was junior year of college, and I had so much fun. I, I honestly did. I gave myself mono from working too much, which you can do, not from kissing, just from working a lot. But it was really fun. Why does she want to renew that, that year? Why would well, you? Well, I lost a lot of weight. That was fun. <laughs> but also, I just had fun. Is the show over? It's almost. <laughs> Uh, minus 23 the year I moved here. See? That was fun. Was Early exciting. 20s are great. You're broke, but it's great. Oh, yeah. Again, roasted chicken from the gas station. Ramen noodles, baby. But, uh, but yeah, I loved that. That first year was so exciting. Mm -hmm. New city, new place. Right.
right. Yeah, it was great. 1997 oh, was gosh, the yeah. Gosh, really? I, I know you. I know you were drawing in your highlights coloring book. Excuse me. Tomorrow on the show, it's National Show and Tell Day, so the staff is back to mark the occasion with Jason Show staff Show and Tell. That's tomorrow. But right now, if you're watching and you're being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching, everyone.